Hi guys, Mary's here. Today I'm gonna show you the Tau Army. The models themselves are muted, but there are energetic elements that are the only bright spots. Initially, the armored bright elements are later weathered to give the army a grim-dark feel. There's a lot of edge highlighting and defining edges with an oil wash on the metallics. The Tau army consists of 124 models, including 4 tanks, 3 piranhas, 8 models with stealth elements and one completely red model, Commander Farsight. Other models have red elements to unify the entire army. For painting these red elements we used inks and we will share some tips how to use them to achieve the best effect and well pigmented color. Commander Farsight will serve as our example. Overall the model is meant to be red, so Nicola starts with a brown base coat since red looks good over it. She mixes dark brick and dark marble for this. Then she adds highlights and even more highlights. She paints the mechanical parts on the joints of arms and legs under the armor with black ink. Using burnt amber she builds the volume and defines the edges. Next she uses white ink to highlight the brightest areas. Now it's time for the red ink. Inks are transparent but well pigmented. You can apply them in layers with each additional layer increasing the color saturation. Applying them over a previously painted model allows you to change its hue. If we had used acrylic paints, we would have covered the previous layers. And let's back to the project. Nicola covers the entire model with it in several layers of red ink, focusing more on the shadows to make the color most intense there. The red should be dark, so she also uses black ink in the shadows. Pavel checks to make sure the models look just right. Meanwhile Nicola paints the energy effects and this is how it looks after using the airbrush. Now Pavel will start painting. Pavel begins with a white wash in the recesses where the light effect will be. Then he edges with white paint. He uses a red ink and glazes over the previously painted areas as well. Mixing cadmium red dark with white, he blends from the brightest sides and glazes over it again with the ink. The white enhanced non-metal metallic edges. To create the light effect, Pavel applies a white wash in the recesses. He uses turquoise to paint transitions between colors that the airbrush couldn't achieve. Black ink is used to darken the metallic parts. Then he highlights the edges of the sword with white. To enhance the effect of the energy sword, he paints light lines on the blade. The white wash from the beginning is filled with turquoise. Returning to the armor, Pavel paints spiral red to the brightest spots. He also glazes those areas with ink. 
Overall, he repeats the glaze step on the red parts 2-3 times to deepen the color intensity. Finally, he does the final edge highlighting since the previous highlights were covered by the ink. And this is how Commander Farsight looks like. You might have noticed that to achieve such a saturated red, Pavel follows specific steps. I will show you this process again, this time on the larger surface. First, Nicola paints the base brown, adding light highlights. Then she covers it with red ink in multiple layers. Since the ink are transparent, there's no worry about the color covering the previous work. The light and shadow effects from before now take on the red hue. Pavel starts by adding shadows with black ink. Then he applies red acrylic paint and blends it. He adds white and light red to the edges and blends again. He covers everything with layer of red ink. Next he applies white and light red to the edges and after drying covers it with another layer of ink. He repeats this process, each time applying white to a smaller area and finishes with a touch of pure white highlights. Contrast is crucial, as it makes the same color look completely different. By edge highlighting with a very light color, the red stands out even more. And how does it look on smaller models? We have a piranha, which only have small red elements around the engines. At this point, only the airbrushing has been done. Pavel begins by working on the base coat, covering areas that the airbrush didn't reach well. He uses black ink to create shadows. Using inks instead of acrylics makes the surface shinier. Then he shades using acrylics, blending cadmium red dark and titanium white. He applies red ink over the blending. The surfaces are small, so he needs to be more precise. He applies white on the edge and blends it in. Then he applies red ink again. The red glaze is repeated 2-3 times to deepen the intensity of the effect. Inks are transparent, making them easy to use for enhancing the color's pigmentation. Finally, he adds white edge highlights. And this is how Parana looks like. Thank you so much for watching, if you liked today's video don't forget to press the like button and leave the comment down below and if you're new and want to see more of our videos don't forget to subscribe our channel. If you want to upgrade your army check out our website, we have nice 3D printed models and see you next time!